Being a public servant, oh, working for the city or the state or the county, that's one thing. Being a fire department personnel in the fire department, I, I would, I, when I was with the city, uh, we were in something called civil defense. You know? Emergency service, it turned out to be, okay? You sit up there with a little blue light on your car at a, at a fire, and what do you do at, at that place? Um, you keep the crowd back, okay? And you keep the crowd from stealing stuff from the fire department. <laughs> yes. And the other thing with that thing, you, you, um, we, we had cameras. So we would photograph the fire department, right? We weren't photographing the fire department. We were photographing the crowd back there. Why? Who shows up at a fire two or three times? Yeah. But you want to be in the fire department? Yeah. Go visit a morgue. Why? Because sooner or later you're going to be pulling somebody out, somebody out dead out of the thing. And many fires that I went to, um, if there were home fires, there were people without smoke alarms. And they said, the fire starts somewhere, it hits the ceiling, and the smoke comes down. And when a person's in a bedroom with an open door, the smoke comes down. The person suffocates. And it's pretty bad when it's a child. Adults, you can, yeah. And you, you ever want to see a grown man cry? Yeah. When he pull, when he's pulling out a child out of a um, a fire scene. Somebody says it reminds you of the Lady of Our Angels school fire in Chicago decades ago, where you had all these children suffocated, burned. Somebody locked a door, an exit door. Yeah, they actually physically locked the door so you couldn't get it. They chained it. Uh-huh. And uh, nobody could get out. They, they suffocated and burned. That's that thing is about, it's very hard. You, to be a fire department personnel, you have to realize, one, you're going to pull out dead bodies because that's what the fire department does with a coroner, EMTs. I know women who, what, well, gee, I want to be a fireman. Really? Good. Well, what you do is you said, here's your tank. Your tank. Well, if you have, you're going to be the fire per person, you have to wear all this clothing, you got to wear your heavy helmet, you got to put on these boots and everything. We will get the stuff your size. Okay? And oh, by the way, Wear that tank, because if you go into a fire, you can't breathe the smoke that's the the, the caused by the fire. You got wood, but you got plastic. It's toxin. If you breathe in, you start coughing. The next time you, br you breathe in, your lung is your lungs are destroyed, because it's usually cyanide gas. You're, you're your smoke you're picking up. That's what plastic is made out of. You, know, you get hydrogen and cyanide plus all the other stuff. And fire department personnel have, unlike the uh, TV series, you know, um, you suffocate. Or, I'll put it this way, you come out with seared lungs. That's just like being poison gas, okay? The other thing is you have to carry your fat thing. If you're EMT, you have to be able to lift a person with your partner that's on a gurney up. And you get some pretty fat people out there that demand you help them, but you can't lift them. Then you have, that's why you have the fire engine with two guys, strong guys to come along. 
your EMT ambulance, and then you got the the fire with the, That's that's the thing. That's why they always send those extra people, because you got a 350 pound person that you have to move. That's only three feet tall. Okay, bowling balls with feet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can get somebody like me. You got six, um, six and a half feet tall, and we weigh a lot of lot of poundage. And uh, you get today, you get a person that is um, overdosing, and they can be big, large blubbers that's in bad shape have overdosed and maybe they come out of it and maybe they don't come out of it when you give that little syringe and uh, they may come out of it they may not get out of it but either way if, if they don't you have to lift them it's like a fire you have to go up a ladder and a lot of w women go up there and they said I just can't do this I says yeah so would you still like to work for the fire department and not go up a ladder or wear this equipment? You can drive a truck. You can be an EMT. You can drive a truck. But I want to be a fire and completely do all this stuff. Lee, your life, life is in your hands. You know, swinging an axe is swinging an axe. And there's reason for swinging an axe because you're going to pull off part of a roof. Or pull down part of a wall, and it's this way: you, the guys, guys will look at you as their wife or their sister, okay? And I know you want to be part of the fire department. You want to be a secretary? You want to answer the phones? You want to be EMT? It's a rough life. It's a dangerous life, especially if you're a mother. How do we go home and tell your your husband or your children that you got suffocated in a fire? I wouldn't like that. I wouldn't like somebody, my wife wants to be a fire person, and she suffocates. Her oxygen runs out. Or she gets hit by some falling debris. She's not six and a half feet tall. Otherwise, if she was 60 feet tall, she'd be playing basketball. No, she'd be a shrimp on the basketball team. But really, you know, how does, what do you think is going to happen when that fire man or fire woman goes into a burning building and pulls out a kid that's scorched? It hits the guys. What do you think her her results going to be? You know, the guys after a, a fire and that they they go to a psychiatrist, especially if they're children. And if you think this is bad, think think of a war zone like Ukraine right now, where Putin kills indiscriminately drops bombs and they use gets scattered or even better the oak the the murders of, of school children with a 20 two two three and the fire department has to scrape them up off the floor and I guarantee guarantee you that that guy was if that guy was alive fire department would kill kill them but again being a fireman is is hard it's it's psychologically hard physically hard and psychologically hard because you go into buildings and I I, I was with emergency service keeping people back you know helping with the holes and what have you you know um, they're the ones who hold the holes. I'm the one that help roll the stuff out and that, or roll the stuff up. But they are the fire department holding the holes nozzle or doing the, the more dangerous work. You're just the assistant of that stuff, but you don't go beyond a certain point. 
and uh, especially if there's bodies involved because now you bring in the emergency bag, drop it on the gurney and they go in. You may pick up a bag and Yeah, and you can tell basically by the weight of the bag if this is an adult or a child. And uh, then you go to the uh, the shrink. Yes, you go to the shrink and they ask you the questions. How did you feel? Not so good. How do you think they felt? Pretty bad because they saw it firsthand. And just think if you were in Crane and somebody just dropped a, a rocket into a building and now now you're pulling out the they were killed on purpose. I think it really splattered or pulling out the dead bodies that were massacred by the Russians. Who are those? Those are your fire department people. Yeah, emergency service people. It's it's bad and well, like war zones. It's bad. The fire departments are always there. Let's see, when did the fire? Oh, New Orleans, a country you know, where the public officials all left the city with a few cops and a few fire department, but most of the public officials, including the mayor, was hiding somewhere else. But yeah, that's being in, in the fire department is extremely psychologically disturbing to, for the person that is actually a fire person or fireman or firewoman. And it's very, very rough on your mind. And yet the, old, the old saying goes, you may not go to sleep tonight, tossing and turning. You could have done more. You should have done more. Should have been there earlier. Should have put more water on the fire. You should have done this. You should have done that. Yeah. And uh, it's not unusual for a fireman to have a problem with sleeping and seeing. Yeah. But that's the uh, your public serpent for you. And they don't get paid enough. Really. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't want to walk into a room and see children dead. I don't think. No.